on every day at this time at, uh, let's see, 1 to 3 Eastern, which is 10 to noon Pacific time. Boomersbraintrust.com is the website. And you can ask the Brain Trust a question by clicking on the Ask the Brain Trust link. We have the Brain Trust in uh, at least a couple of times every day right here. All right, so uh, now over the many years, we boomers have had a lot on our minds. All right, we've spent many sleepless nights worrying about a lot of things going back to our much younger days. Things like the military draft, the war in Vietnam, transitioning into parenthood. That's about it. We don't have that many worries. But, but, as many of us start to hit or have already hit retirement age, you would think that whatever worries we might have had as boomers would decrease and those sleepless nights would be long gone, right? No. Uh, for many boomers, whether they've got a lot or little on their minds, getting a good night's rest is nearly impossible. Yes, a big to-do list can be a culprit in all of this, but it's absolutely not the only thing that's giving people problems at night. Now, there are a whole bunch of things that are keeping our generation up and walking around like so many aged hippie zombies. I guess that's the bad news. The good news is there are things you can do to help alleviate the problem. Now, joining us right now on the Boomer's Lifeline is Lois Maharg, author of the book, The Savvy Insomniac, A Personal Journey Through Science to Better Sleep. Uh, you want solutions to your problems? We've got them right here on the line. And I welcome you to the program, Lois. Thanks for being with us here today. Well, thank you for having me. You bet. So, so what's going on with our generation? I'm talking about boomers. Why the lack of sleep? Right. Well, first off, we tend to get a lot less deep sleep than we got as children. Uh, children until about age 11 spend about a third of the night in deep sleep, which is really the most restorative kind of sleep. But by the time we get our age and older, we get maybe just 10 or 15 percent deep sleep. So our our sleep is really lighter and less refreshing. Also, you know there are hormonal changes that accompany the change in life for women. Uh, less estrogen results in lower levels of melatonin, and melatonin is the hormone of darkness, and it helps us get to sleep at night and stay sleeping during the night. And with lower levels of melatonin, that's going to also interfere with our sleep. Um, another thing you mentioned was retirement. Usually when we're working at jobs, we, hey, we keep a consistent sleep schedule. We get up at the same time every morning and go to the sleep at roughly the same time at night. But at retirement, you sort of feel like, oh, I don't have any more commitments, and so I can sleep whenever I choose to. But actually, our bodies really crave that kind of regularity. And if we don't get up at the same time every day, not enough sleep drive builds right. up during the day. So that's a problem as well. Now, now we have Lois, I have, to, I have to mention, I never had any problems sleeping a full eight hours uh, a night until I reached my 40s. And now I get to sleep really easily. I mean, I'm out like a light come 7.30, 8 o'clock. But I wake up within like three to four hours, and then I have trouble falling back asleep. And I realize that for some folks, four solid hours of sleep can be a luxury. But is there a chance I'll ever get back to that old eight hours of uninterrupted, unmedicated sleep? <laughs> Well, sure. I mean, there are, there are a lot of things you can try. I mean, one thing I've just been talking about is lower levels of melatonin, mm -hmm. and it's possible, although difficult, to use melatonin for sleep maintenance, which is your problem. Mm -hmm. But it's possible that using melatonin might help. Um, Over-the-counter melatonin might not help so much because it just has a very short half-life, but you might check with your doctor about uh, a drug called Remelteon. Um, or another possibly circadin, which is available not in the United States right now, but might possibly be in the future. But really, I think what you need to think about is building up enough sleep drive during the day to get a solid uh, amount of sleep at night. And so what you need to do is maybe postpone going to sleep a little bit longer. And you may find that your sleep is more consolidated than during the night. Hmm. I, I recall working overnight uh, radio, and, and in fact, most of us got our start working overnights, and I would have to transition between overnight hours and then for the weekend to do a weekend shift, I'd have to go back to the daytime hours. And I remember just how difficult it was, and I'd be walking around because I'd have to wake up, you know, after two or three hours and then try to be awake all day. Are you saying that, that it, 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 if, if you're uh, awake 
but tired, that's a better way to go so that you can at least sleep at night? Is that is that what you're saying, or did I miss that? Well, well, our bodies really do crave regularity, so that kind of shift work that you're talking about is just horrible <laughs> as far as our bodies go and, and getting good sleep. And so actually... Um, do all you can to keep regular hours, I would say, particularly getting up at the same time in the morning and avoiding naps if you can possibly. If you go more than 30 minutes for a nap, you'll descend into deep sleep, and that will cut down on the amount of deep sleep that you build up, or I'm sorry, sleep drive that you build up, which will propel you easily into sleep that night and keep you sleeping through the night. Uh, Lois, how important are rituals? You know, uh, certain things that you do or certain food or drink that you avoid or, you know, just uh, maybe a warm bath or maybe a little bit of yoga. Is there anything you can do that is going to just help you once you get into that deep sleep to stay there? To stay there. Well, I think it is important really to have a bedtime ritual. I mean, the experts all say that it is. I know for myself that it is. Um, an evening bath can actually increase the temperature of your, um, your skin, which actually facilitates internal cooling. And what you want is for your body to sort of be cooling down inside at night. And so a bath is a really good thing to do. Um, some people, and I'm, in, I'm included among them, find that daily exercise is also a way to increase, to, to make you sleep sounder. And um, a couple of experiments done in the 1980s showed that exercise, when, when you've got a problem with sleep, exercise later in the day, as in late in the afternoon or early in the, early in the evening, will be most helpful for you at, uh, at night. Lois Maharg, now you got a book out very quickly. Uh, where can uh, people get some more information on this and maybe maybe at least get, uh, get get a little more educated on this important topic here? Well, for more information, you can go to my website, which is thesavvyinsomniac.com. Thesavvyinsomniac.com. And the name of the book, again, is The Personal it's Journey called, Through... Go ahead. It's called The Savvy Insomniac. A Personal Journey Through Science to Better Sleep. That's important stuff for boomers especially. Hey, Lois, we appreciate you being on with us for a few minutes, all right? Thanks for okay, having Okay, all right, Absolutely. yeah. Uh, I just hearken back again to those overnight. The, or those overnights. you talk about overnights, newborns, you know, up well, taking care thing. of them throughout the, the night. Thing. I remember yeah. thinking there is nobody awake right now in the world except me. That's it. <laughs> you, yeah, just, hey. you feel so... Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, by yourself. Hey, hey, helpless. You, know? you look outside. There's yeah. no traffic out there. Yeah. The, 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 even the street lights have decided they're going out for mm -hmm. the night. You know, that's it. Uh, nothing more alone than that. So, all right. I, I'm actually going to check that out. Yeah, I, I think yeah. that's good. All right, very cool stuff. All right. Well, if you need the Brain Trust anytime, 24 hours a day, middle of the night, whatever, you can go to <laughs> boomersbraintrust.com and you can send us an email or just listen or watch the show, whatever. Uh, that's it for us for this hour. For Dinah Smith, uh, I'm Johnny Dean. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening.